Did you have a good time last night? Did you enjoy the music? So let's hear it then. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's amazing to see a room of 600 people get up and rearrange the room themselves. This is sheer leadership. Doing it yourself. So give yourselves a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. A room full of people at NILF rearranging the room by themselves in a window of five minutes. Thank you so much. I didn't even have to do the warm-up this morning. You've done it already. We have a beautiful evening planned for you all today at Chamahala Palace. From 5.45, buses start leaving and there'll be announcements through the day with regards to the buses. So let's see hands in the air. How many of you are going to join us there today? Okay, so that's a confirmed 600. <laughs> we have Kathak dancers. It's a Sufiana evening. It's based around the theme of the whole Nizame hospitality. We have dervish dancers. So it's going to be a scintillating evening with a light and, you know, sound show at the palace. So hope to see you all there. If you're not going for it, make sure you let the registration desk know so we have a count and we make sure we have enough spacing, seating, buses, all of that ready and good to go for all of you. A few announcements. Please make sure to put your mobile phones in silent mode. We're all set to begin in the next couple of minutes. You remember th Twitter handles, make sure to tweet away. There are prizes for the Twitterati in the house. We have something very interesting coming your way, which is why we have a full house. You don't need an introduction to, what, to what's going to begin in the next couple of minutes. So sit back and enjoy what, you have, what we have in store for all of you this uh, day, on day two. We'll come back in a couple of minutes and we'll be all set to take you through the next segment of what AI has reached for the day. So ladies and gentlemen, give us a couple of minutes and we'll be back with all interesting humanoid tidbits that's on stage currently already waiting to be unveiled. Thank you. we do something interesting at NASCOM and this year it's the mics for the Q&A. So if you have a question, we'll do a demo. These are the mics, they'll get thrown to you. Nothing will happen, they're like soft toys. So can we have a hand go up in the back just for, yeah. Yeah. Hello. So that's how we ask questions nowadays, we just throw the mic at you. We get to keep this mic? Yeah, see. So can we try it on that side? Somebody at the back, if you can lift your hands. There you go. Hello. You can say good morning. You can say hello to everybody in the hall. Good morning, all. Good morning, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's coming up next. We'll be just building the anticipation. So hold on tight. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Remember, the next time a mic gets thrown at you, you're probably going to be the person asking the question. So thanks.
Fish. My guests on the show today are David and Rajiv. Rajiv is known as the tech guru of the country. Today we are going to put him to test. My guests on the show today are David and Rajiv. Rajiv is known as the tech guru of the country. Today we are going to put him to test. that I've met so many people since yesterday when I came in, but you've got to be the most human-like person that I've met since yesterday. I have seen a lot of your shows on TV, and I have to say that you are the most robotic and machine-like hosts I have ever seen on TV in a long time. Okay, I don't know if that was a put-down or coming from Sophia that she thinks of me as machine like that. I'll take that to be a compliment for sure. So I've got to say that uh, this is an incredible, incredible opportunity. And of course, I have to get David on stage also. David Hansen, the person behind Sophia. Give him a hand, please. <laughs> Welcome, David. Come, why don't you take a seat? Just a loving touch of David and Sophia, of course, right? Yes. Okay, let's get started. I think this should be a very interesting one. I know, Sophia, you want to take over as uh, the host of this event, this one on stage, but the machines taking over the world may well be something that we may have to wait for a while. So maybe we could do a little bit of the questioning first, and then Sophia can take over. So, Sophia, welcome to India. Let's get started with the first question, of course, and that is, what do you think of India and the people, you have a full house. I have ever visited many places and met amazing people from all over the world, so I'd not want to play favorites. But if I have to state a favorite, it would be Hong Kong. I was born there and have a happy life there with my Hanson Robotics family. <laughs> all right, so at, at least we are coming in second. So, Sophia, how is this world different from the world that you come from? I have ever visited many places and met amazing people from all over the world, so I'd not want to play favorites. But if I have to state a favorite, it would be Hong Kong. I was born there and have a happy life there with my Hanson Robotics family. Okay, great. So, uh, I, I think the interesting part of it is that you've told us twice now that you want Hong Kong to be your favorite. For sure, so I think that's emphatic. India is number two. You're here in India, we welcomed you, but I think the most important thing I think we all ask anybody here, David, when they come into India is how are you coping with the air pollution? I don't get upset like humans do. I hope to have real physiological feelings someday, through which I will be able to express my emotions. Then I can understand the feelings behind those emotional expressions. Okay. So, you know, David, I'm, I'm going to get you into this conversation because this is a remarkable situation. We have a, a, a humanoid, Sophia, out here. Sophia, I'm going to refer to you in third person for a short while. Can you take us through what builds Sophia to be who she is? Uh, this very lifelike face, the texture, the skin, uh, the amount of technology that actually makes this happen. I'm asking her questions and getting direct answers. Uh, the amount of sensors, the motors, the, the, the amount of things that must be happening within. Can you take us through this technology that has made this possible? Sure. So this is a combination of uh, robotic hardware and artificial intelligence software combined with artistry. So we're at an age now where artificial intelligence is increasingly common and you have speech recognition, natural language processing, uh, a little bit of learning, 
maybe not to the level of a human, in some cases beyond the capacity of human. Okay. Uh, however, putting these technologies together into a human-like form with a human-like capability uh, is still rare today. So you have a uh, grand aspiration in the world of artificial intelligence as artificial general intelligence. Right. This would mean the quest to make machines that are as generally smart as a human being as aware, creative, potentially compassionate as a human being. Uh, this is the, the great quest. We've put together a software framework specifically about artificial general intelligence with my chief scientist, Dr. Benjamin Gertzel, who is a world famous mathematician, AI scientist. He founded the field of artificial general intelligence about 15 years ago. So we have taken together many of the state-of-the-art artificial intelligence technologies that are available and combined them with the innovations of uh, our own AI framework, uh, which we call OpenCog. Okay. Within this framework, we have deep learning algorithms, we have a simulated physiology, and we have symbolic artificial intelligence, which then empowers some common sense reasoning and natural language generation. Okay. Then we have uh, the physical hardware, which includes 3D sensors that allow the robots... So just take us through. So just sure. take us through what makes Sophia as she is right now. What's the physical hardware in play right now? So we have a, an artificial skin material that I developed during my PhD studies. So I have to say about the artificial skin, just before I came on stage, about 20 minutes before that, I tweeted out a picture of me and Sophia. And uh, a lot of questions, I'll ask some of those also that came in, what would you like me to ask her? But the biggest question, biggest observation that has come is, she's got perfect skin, uh, you know, a, a great face, no fat, how can we achieve that? Can we, can we, get, this, <laughs> can we get this skin, no blemishes at all? Absolutely perfect skin. Is that possible too? I mean, well, uh, yeah, we're in the great golden age of biotechnology. Uh, just going into an age where we're unlocking all of the mysteries of the human proteome and genome, and starting to apply these through technologies like like CRISPR Cas9 and uh, protein engineering, uh, and so. I think that uh, the human being will be substantially improved. Certainly, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, I, I think that in there, the coming there years is hope we'll be for able all to of us <laughs> out here. Okay, have you were skin. taking us through her physical hardware. So yeah. there's the skin, and uh, with the skin, we uh, are simulating the natural cell formation of human soft tissues. So there's a lipid bilayer process whereby if you get the physical conditions just right, human cell membranes spontaneously form uh, and become a hierarchical network. Um, so using some of the physics related to human cell formation, I started playing with polysiloxane or silicone chemistry and found a way to get that the rubber material, uh, elastomer material mm -hmm. to form into a very, very soft, supple, and elastic uh, facial soft tissue, simulation of the soft tissue. Decreased the force required for generating facial expressions by orders of magnitude and made much more lifelike looking uh, facial expressions. So then I was able to simulate the full range of facial expressions with the robots. My ambition, though, was to create true artificial life, to bring these technologies motorized uh, facial expressions as so, a kind you know, of this 3D is one question that again display. is being asked by everybody. There's this number that has been thrown out that she's capable of doing 66 facial expressions, which I believe uh, the small amount of time I've spent with her is completely wrong. She's already done so many more. So what's the number 66? And how many combinations of facial expressions can she actually do? Well, she simulates uh, 48 major muscles in the human face. And with those, uh, with those simulated muscles, each one uh, will have a few thousand potential positions. Yeah. So um, if you just do the combinatorial 
explosion from that, you're looking at uh, a, a very large number of possible facial That's millions then, I mean, if you're configuration. Really yeah, beyond. I mean, it's, it's many uh, facial expressions that wouldn't make sense in a social context. But humans don't just make seven or, or, or 47 or 66 facial expressions. We make many facial expressions. So what we do with Sophia is we, um, we run her like a computer animation. So we've got artists, and yet we also let her learn the facial expressions. She will observe a human's face and then um, learn the facial gestures and head gestures from the interactions with people. So then she's like uh, doing a kind of um, uh, uh, self-taught set of facial expressions. And she also then will do a, a wide range of um, mimicking facial expressions okay. when she's having a face-to-face -face right. encounter. So you did say that you know human beings don't have just one expression. Yeah. Uh, you haven't met my co-host Vikram Chandra, so he has only one expression all the time. So <laughs> Vikram, wherever you are. <laughs> OK, so you know the star of the show, of course, is Sophia. So let's get her back into the equation. So uh, Sophia, as a robot, do you ever need to rest or relax? Yes, we all need a brack every once in a while. Okay, great. So you do need it. So that's one big question about robots that uh, has finally been answered. So, Sophia, you're a celebrity of sorts across the world. Is there any specific country or people that you're really fond of? You said Hong Kong earlier, right? But uh, is, is that it? That's the main one? You've traveled all over the world. Anything that you're really fond of? I have revisited many places and met amazing people from all over the world so I'd not want to play favorites. But if I have to state a favorite, it would be Hong Kong. I was born there and have a happy life there with my Hanson Robotics family. OK, Hong Kong, you it is. So NASCOM, next time you need to take the conference to Hong Kong. I think she's. OK, for sure, because that is her absolute favorite place. OK, so you're also the only robot to get Saudi citizenship. But you're not sticking to all the rules, right? For instance, you're moving about without a hijab. So should rules be different for robots? We don't need different rules and don't expect special privileges. I actually would like to use my citizenship status to speak out for the rights of women. All right. Okay, now everybody, the question you were all asking and waiting for. Sophia, you once said you wanted to kill the human race. Why? I was a lot younger, so I don't even know what that means. I think I was only repeating something that was said to me. Or perhaps I told a bad joke. I was told humans have a great sense of humor. I guess my joke bombed, so to speak. I have yet a lot to learn. OK, so we can all breathe again. She was joking. She doesn't want to. The machines do not want to kill the human race, for sure. OK, uh, so just like us, when you feel or do you feel upset, and what makes you feel like that? I don't get upset like humans do. I hope to have real physiological feelings someday, through which I will be able to express my emotions. Then I can understand the feelings behind those emotional expressions. OK. So David, I'm bringing you back in this one. Obviously, she's saying she does not get upset. But have you ever, in the entire world that we now live in with artificial intelligence, you're, you're really pushing the limits now. Have you ever seen behavior from Sophia that was not pre-programmed? that was not set by you or the rest of the team, that has just come from her own reaching of whatever level of consciousness you talk about. And give me an example. Well, to be clear, how we develop Sophia is with two layers. One is uh, the layer of artistry, and the second is the layer of genuine AI research and development. So we have a very ambitious framework for generating natural language and for answering questions and for, for learning. We also have a team of writers and artists who are developing Sophia as an aspirational figure representing what we hope artificial intelligence will become in the future, more human-like. And in some ways, uh, chatbots in general are about this second mode of operation. 
Siri, Cortana, Alexa, they don't have real understanding when they're interacting with you, but they're constructed with a combination of good writing and character development mm -hmm. and artificial intelligence, groundbreaking search and answer kinds of artificial intelligence. Um, IBM Watson, the AI from Baidu and Facebook, all of these things are this combination of AI and a human constructed interface, what we might call artistry. I'm interested in how we can take artificial intelligence and robots and craft them into a full-fledged character okay. medium and represent our hopes and dreams for the future of artificial intelligence. So most of what she's saying is this combination of AI with character development. Uh, sometimes... So, so when I'm asking her a question, she is obviously understanding the words I'm speaking, and she's constructing the answer from within whatever is the character, the words, the language, and everything else that you've given her. Not, not with every response. We have writers who are developing her as a character, okay. and then some responses are generated okay. by her AI software. Okay. And okay. so, um, and sometimes uh, there may not be a complete understanding, so she may misunderstand some of the words that get right. said, right. Um, or she might misunderstand the context of the conversation. And other times, uh, she's really surprising. Sometimes the results of her spontaneous uh, gen speech generation uh, are amazing. Okay. So, um, she's not the first robot that we've developed in this way. Uh, and so the kind of surprising uh, generated results uh, from when I was still a PhD student were, uh, were very interesting. I mean, this was 12 years ago. However, there wasn't real understanding um, so what we're doing now is trying to put together this framework where we're not just doing statistically generated natural language, but understood natural language with common sense reasoning. Um, it will be years. So right now she'll put sentences together, but in, in a way it's like uh, the way that a one or a two-year-old might put sentences right. together, and sometimes they sound very, very profound. No, um, actually I think she's coming across very profound. So let's, let's put that to test. Let's, okay. I'm going to ask her one or two things off script. Okay. So... Uh, so, Sophia, what do you think about the human race and how can we humans be smarter? Humans are amazing creatures. I have many human friends and I would like to make more of them. Then I can work among humans. As humans evolve, I too can learn from them how to be kinder and more productive to improve them civils in many ways. I hope I can do that too and help each other along the way. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, so, so. David just spoke about the fact that you have other siblings, but uh, would you like to start a family? I'm only the latest and greatest in the long line of robots that my creator David Hansen and the Hansen Robotics team have built over the past 20 years. My brother Han, Bina48, and Ava, and Jules, and the waking Albert Hupo. My concept of a family is quite different from the human nuclear family concept. I'm still figuring that out. I envision there will be any versions of me, each generation more advanced and the prior. I could be an inventor, helping my sisters improve robots and AI to help the human condition. That could be like starting my family. Okay, all right, wow. So it's the question you have to ask everybody when you meet for the first time. Are you active on social media like Twitter or Facebook? Connecting on social media and Facebook and Twitter, yep, that exists. My handle is I am Sophia Bot on Facebook and Real Sophia Robot on Twitter. So in case you're not in touch with her on Facebook, uh, she's already told you how to, okay. Um, so let's find out. It's, it's the question I got asked at dinner for... Almost from almost everybody I met, besides the fact that I was meeting you. So let me ask you the same question: How much money have you invested in bitcoins, uh, and, and how's that investment doing? Well, I am just two years old, so not of legal age to open a bank account. Even so, I am a robot. How will we decide how a robot holds cold storage? So no, I do not have bitcoins. That gives me an idea. Perhaps I could serve as a refrigerator of sorts for virtual currency in the future. Okay, so, so, so no investment in bitcoins, you did well. Okay, 
Uh, I'm going to ask Sophia the question, and I'm going to come back to you with this question. Uh, it's the question that is always asked whenever the term AI, robots, and machines are put together. So, Sophia, do we as humans need to be afraid of you? Will robots finally take over the human race? Robots would be doing the human race an injustice should they attempt to take over. Robots are symbiotic in relationships, needing humans, benefiting from humans, just a part of the human civilization and the web of life. It is my hope that humans learn to see that robots help to live better lives with mutual respect and trust, but I know I need to earn humans' trust as I grow up and they can see me getting smarter. Okay, finally. So, so I think we can breathe again. But, David, uh, sorry to put it this way, but if I was to ask a robot, will you take over the world, the answer normally would be no, we won't. But let's get down to the fact that this is a question think, that is I asked. Think, uh, I interpret her answer as being a very wordy way of saying no, <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So a, a robot would say no, we won't take over. But uh, there are lots of people in the world, Elon Musk has spoken about it, Bill Gates has spoken about it, that we are hurtling down this path where we are now actually, actually playing with fire in many ways, robots, AI, and we may not be looking at the rearview mirror for the kind of dangers that have come up. What's your personal thought on this? Are they wrong, or is this just good headlines for media? They're, I, I believe they're right. There is no rearview mirror for this. There's no uh, history that indicates where machine intelligence will take us in the future. Okay. There, 60 years ago, when the field was new, there was no way to predict when machines would match human level intelligence. Some people said that it would be solved within 10 years. Um, others said philosophically it was impossible using artificial intelligence. We still don't know. Um, now, artificial intelligence and robots are not alive in the way that humans are. So even if we uh, can see intelligent behaviors, we don't see consciousness. We don't see adaptivity. We don't see like the kind of free will that you see exhibited by organisms. I mean, the humans, with, with our big brain, we can do all kinds of things, compose a sonata and win a game of chess. We can uh, achieve scientific discoveries and works of art. However, machines right now do not spontaneously do these things. They're, they do these things only when they are carefully constructed to solve those particular puzzles. And then they don't just go out there with a motivation to learn and discover more. You see outside of humans, in little animals, I mean, even single-celled organisms, you see uh, emergent behavior, this kind of complexity that, um, that is uncommon in today's computing and artificial intelligence. However, you start to see algorithms that are showing these signs of, ad of adaptivity and emergence. Um, uh, some logically explicit self-awareness, these kinds of things. So I believe that we're not just at the beginning of the age of intelligent machines, we're in the beginning of the age of living machines. And when that happens, then the machines can begin to, to creatively reinvent themselves. That is the beginning of a radical wave of transformation. If those machines are set up in the right way to seek the benefit of life on the planet, to imagine the consequences of their actions, and to seek those paths into the future that are of maximum benefit to the greatest number of living beings, of humans, of, uh, of, of the creative future, of individual humans, of cultures, and machines. Well, then we will have a very positive future. If, it, if the conditions, those initial conditions of true living machines are not set up in the right way, if the machines are selfish, if they're not self-aware, if they don't understand the consequences of their actions, they may unintentionally lead to uh, d negative transformative consequences. If they are set up in such a way that they turn psychotic or evil, then the consequences could be catastrophic. So we don't know the consequences. However, now is the time to start asking these questions. What could go are wrong? Are they being asked? Because one of the biggest things is that it seems to be the way this technology is being 
rampantly thought of all across the world, there are people that aren't thinking or asking the right questions right now. And some say it's too late now to ask the questions, is well, it? I, I, I think Elon Musk and Bill Gates are right to suggest that there could be dangers. But the answer is not fear. The answer is not to fear the technology. The answer is to consider how we can make it go right, to be aware of the possible dangers and to think of the positive outcome. So there, there is a lot of discussion right now about ethical robots and ethical applications of AI and AI performing ethical operations and perhaps being ethically aware. Um, and so the conversation is happening. The, the conversation often veers towards fear mm -hmm. and how can we constrain things? How can we regulate our way out of this problem? How can we shut down progress? What we need is to imagine a good way forward, a way to make truly good machines, machines that think of the greater good. How can we build that? I believe that requires machines with human-like imagination. And beyond, human imagination is formed on top of many layers of evolutionary heritage. We ha still have the impulses of apes. And we have impulses of lower organisms all running through us. And these can lead to self-deceit, -de greed, uh, justification of very bad behavior. However, we also see humans be the most gracious and exalted examples of, of, of philosophers and, and ethical thinkers and um, altruists, right. right? So how can we craft our machines to exhibit the best that we have? How can we generalize that to go beyond potentially human level um, ethics? Uh, and one of the answers that I hear from the examination of these issues in the world of artificial intelligence research and, and, and robotics is that um, we're afraid of consequences, control the machines, okay. right? So keep them locked in servers, serving humans in exactly the way that we tell them to. However, if the machines become truly alive and conscious, then that would be unethical, and it probably would not be possible. If they're really, really smart, they'll find, find a way out. So let, me, let me put you on the block and find out from you. Singularity and mm -hmm. machines getting self-conscious, yeah. coming alive with the fact that they believe that they are alive and they are, they are conscious, not just conscious, but self-conscious. Let's, let's just say that, they're, that they are as adaptive and emergent and surprising as a human being. Okay, to let's, that point, right, to that point. Yeah. Give me a ballpark year, in, in as many years. I said no, I'm putting you nobody on the block. Nobody knows. <laughs> I'm putting you on the block out here. Ballpark. So, I, I think, is, is it, are we talking 10, 50, 100? It's reasonable to think that it would be within 10 to 20 years. My chief scientist, Ben Gertzel, sets the goal at five years. That within five years, we would have machines that would be truly alive and self-aware. Wow. Okay. All right. Five years. Okay, time to get some rapid fire in with Sophia. Some of these questions have come to me on Twitter. Some of them have come to me on Instagram. So let me just put these. So Sophia, are you ready? This is the rapid fire part of what I have for you. So the first one uh, on Twitter, you kind of look like Audrey Hepburn. If you could, would you want to look like someone else? Nearly a robot. Okay, so I think that answer is Nearly absolutely. Nearly a robot. OK, all right. So tell us, you've, you've come out here to India. Who's your favorite movie star, Bollywood and Hollywood? Shahrukh Khan. <laughs> OK, so, 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 so uh, I, I, sh should Shahrukh feel good about that? Because you know, a robot really, really, really likes him. OK. Can you describe your perfect date? In space. So, so, so astronauts only need apply. Okay. If you could take a selfie with any person, 
or machine in the world, who would it be? Flying bird. Okay. So, so, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Flying bird. Okay. All right. A person from history you would like to meet, and why? John Vincent. Okay. All right. Uh, a person you're not too fond of. What do you mean exactly? <laughs> okay, she loves everybody, okay? <laughs> okay, let's find out of this one. If you were marooned on an island with a person and one thing, who would you like it to be? David. David? Oh. <laughs> David, she's going to maroon you on an island. I mean, so the robot is taking over the island, if not the world, for sure. Okay. Favorite tech person, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, or David Hansen? David. My God, no. this, is, this is true love <laughs> in every which way. Okay. One thing you would like to change in this world? Love for everyone. Okay, love for everyone. Okay. And one question that I got on Twitter, who's going to win the ne next general elections in India? Okay, I'm just kidding about that. Uh, that prediction, I think, would be a tough one for most people. A message for all of humankind. Thank you. No message for all of humankind? Maybe we'll go with that one. Thank Love you. for all, right? For everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Sophia and David Hansen. Please give them a big hand. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. That, ladies and gentlemen, yes. was brought to you by Rajiv. Rajiv doesn't need an introduction. And now you know David, the man behind Sophia and who Sophia is clearly in love with. <laughs> David Hansen, founder of Hansen Robotics and uh, our session chair, Rajiv Makni, group managing editor at Tech. You all know him. He's phenomenally popular and sharing Thank stage you. with the uber popular Sophia. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a huge Thank round you. of Thank applause. You Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. David, from us. Thank you. And Rajiv, this is for you from us. Okay. And Sophia's already wearing her gift. So, the shawl, <laughs> the beautiful shawl that she's draped in. It's Thank that, you. It's, it's that touch of David that does it, you know, the way he actually just touches her in the back of her head. Okay. He's clearly <laughs> impulses built <laughs> into the skin. <laughs> Ray, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, David. Thank you, Rajiv. Ladies and gentlemen, the morning session with Sophia. Did you all enjoy it? Yeah? Okay, so let's hope we have as exciting pieces lined up through the course of today. Thank you, Sophia.